What's up guys? Justin here with the renderingessentials.com. So in this series, we're going to talk about some of the different PBR maps that you can use in order to make your renderings more realistic. So where to find them, what to do with them, other things like that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we've talked about PBR maps a little bit in the past on the channel. I will link to a video where I talked about that, as well as a downloadable guide that talks you through the different kinds of PBR maps and what they do in your rendering programs. But in this video, I specifically wanted to focus on a couple maps that can make your renderings look a lot more realistic. I wanted to focus on the uh, normal maps and the displacement maps. And so first off, what do they do? So right now, what I have is I have a model inside of Inkscape, and I basically just applied this brick material to all the walls in the model. You can see it rendered over here on the left hand side. And it looks actually pretty good. But the problem with this model right now is that it looks flat. Right? So if I was to fly in and look at this, you can tell that this is just a flat plane in here um, with just like an image applied to it, right? I mean, it still looks pretty decent, all things considered, but it definitely doesn't look realistic. And so what we do is we use and so what we do is we use a couple different maps in order to simulate a more realistic material um, inside of our material renderings, inside of whatever our rendering engine is, whether you're an Inkscape or V-Ray or Twin Motion, it doesn't really matter. They all kind of work the same way. And so the problem with trying to simulate realism inside of a rendering engine is if you look at a brick material like this one, right? If we look at the surface of the brick, and that's really the case with any of these bricks, notice how there's just a ton of roughness and detail on the brick that's very difficult to simulate in a, in a 3D modeling software. And there's a few reasons for that. So the first is just creating this level of detail is very difficult, right? So if we were to go in and try to like split this up and model out all of the detail on our surface right here, first of all, that would be very difficult to do. But second of all, it would create a ton of geometry in here, right? Like right now, this is just a surface. It just has four edges and a face, but if we were to add all of that material definition in here, what that would do is that would add so many different vertices and edges and other things like that, that it would really negatively affect your performance. And so what we do instead is we capture that material detail using different maps. So one of the maps that we use is called a normal map. And so you've probably seen a normal map before. So if I look at this website at Polyhaven and I pick one of the brick materials, notice how there's different color maps down below like this. And so you've probably seen the crazy blue, purple, greenish maps that look like this. These are called normal maps. And so what a normal map does is it takes a photo of an object like this brick and it encodes the height data of that model as RGB values. So basically what that means is that means that that takes the values where this goes up and down in 3D and it basically encodes them into an image using those RGB values. And so there's a bunch of really complicated math that's used in order to do this that you really don't need to understand at all. What you really need to understand is that the normal map is going to take that detail geometric data um, and it's going to make it available to your rendering program. And so let's go into Inkscape and let's load in this material. Again, Again, notice that this is not unique to Inkscape at all. Most most 3D rendering programs have some sort of slot where you can import a normal map or a displacement map, which we'll talk about in a second. So what we want to do in this situation is we want to set the normal map as the kind of map that we're going to bring in here. And then we want to click on this folder. And so we want to go find the normal map. And so usually when you bring these into Inkscape from their material library, this is already set up. If you download from somewhere like Polyhaven, usually it'll download a folder of those different maps. So like, for example, this one comes with an ambient occlusion map, um, your image map, it comes with a displacement map, and it comes with a normal map. Usually those will download from most sites anymore. Um, you just want to make sure that they come with PBR textures. But what we want to do is we want to load this in, make sure this is set to a normal map. Well, now, if you look at this, notice that there's a significant difference in the way that this material looks. So if I was to zoom in this brick material, notice how now what I'm getting is I'm getting this kind of like bumpy look on my surface, 
right? So what it's doing is it's basically taking the surface and even though the surface is 100% flat, it's making the light inside of your rendering interact with it in a way that looks realistic, right? So notice how you get different reflections coming off of different areas of the bumps. And then you can also adjust the intensity of those bumps by dragging this to the left or to the right. So if I drag the intensity down to zero, notice how this looks 100% flat. As I drag it to the right, notice how I'm starting to see a lot more lighting detail on my object. And note that you probably don't wanna overdo this because it's possible to make everything look too bumpy. So usually I try to keep this at about 100%, um, but I will adjust it just based on whatever I want this to look like. So. This is a great way to quickly add like lighting information to these surfaces without having to do anything else. And if you look in the background, notice how all of that detail is showing up in the background as well. However, sometimes you want a little bit more detail because if you look at the surface right now, notice that it's super flat. There's still no depth to this, right? So if you're looking at it from the side, it still doesn't look that realistic. So there's another kind of map that simulates this with a little bit more detail. That map is called a displacement map. And so a displacement map is similar to a normal map in the sense that it's used in order to adjust the way that the, uh, the mesh that your material is applied to looks. However, where the normal mapping is just kind of affecting light, right? So if you look at this image right here, you can see how um, the images on the right that are simulated with a normal map don't actually have any 3D depth to them right? It's just the light is acting like they have 3D depth to them. A displacement map is actually going to move the mesh that's, uh, that it's applied to. So, or it's going to simulate moving the mesh is really what it's going to do. Um, so basically what this is, is instead of you coming in here and adding all of that geometric detail for the surface, right? And then actually like moving it around, like we talked about before, what this does instead is this actually does that within your program. And so inside of Inkscape, it just uses a normal map to do this. Usually in a lot of programs, there's an actual displacement map that you download that's designed to do the displacement inside of your, uh, inside of your software. So it really just kind of depends on what software you're using, but, um, usually you'll load this displacement map in, but let's say that I was to switch the height mapping inside of Inkscape from the normal map, to the displacement map. So notice when I did that, there's a significant difference in the way that this looks, right? If I switch it back to a normal map, you can see how there's not a lot of depth in the grout or anything like that. But if I switch it to the displacement map, notice how all of a sudden this actually looks like, this actually looks like it has depth. So this is actually like simulating the actual movement of the geometry inside of your 3D space. I'm gonna notice how if I drag this to the left, or to the right, then this is actually like moving around in my 3D space, which can create some kind of trippy effects if you go to the negative value. Usually we don't wanna do that. Um, but what we want is we want just some depth for our grout inside of the surface. So notice how I can use the displacement function in here to actually do that. And so different programs do this in different ways. So Inkscape, for example, if you look at this from the side, notice how we still don't have any depth along the edges in here. This is using what's known as parallax displacement. And so parallax displacement, not to get too far into it, basically simulates displacement um, by uh, basically rendering the way that the uh, each one of the points in your space look um, relative to the view angle of the object. So basically what that means is that means that if you look at it from like a straight on or a side view, um, this is using the angle to your camera um, in order to simulate that displacement mapping like this. However, while it's simulating that, notice how along the edges, these are still 100% straight, meaning that it's not actually moving all of the geometry around the outside here. So you do need to be a little bit careful if you're using a program that uses the parallax displacement, um, just to not get those angles to the side of your flat surfaces, because you can tell they're not actually three-dimensional in here just by looking at them from the side. On the other hand, this is a great way to do this because um, it has a faster performance than the actual displacement mapping. So some other programs like V-Ray, for example, um, I think you'll actually get the up and down in here. So this would actually move the mesh around in the 3D space. So the edge wouldn't be completely flat like this. Um, note that that does come with some performance limitations though, because simulating the displacement inside of V-Ray can take a lot longer. So it just kind of depends on the rendering program that you have 
but just be aware that that's a thing. So as a general rule, try to remember to bring in and import these maps to whatever your rendering software is, specifically the normal mapping. So for the displacement mapping um, in programs like V-Ray, I wouldn't recommend using it everywhere because it can make it really slow. So maybe use it in some key areas to make things look more three-dimensional. It's not that big of a deal if you're using a program that uses the parallax mapping because um, that's a very performance-friendly way of doing the displacement mapping. So I will also link to my PBR materials guide down below if you want more information about all the different PBR materials. Um, you can get that by visiting that link. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.